Greetings. In this video, we will go over what's in the page of timing. First up is two sliders for how often Dre should update its data from iRacing. Generally, the sliders are at a good position by default, and if you fancy playing around with it, keep in mind that the general sliders on top always should be at a lower position than the timing slider. For long races with up to 63 cars on track, Lowering the slider a tad can mitigate the worst CPU hogging, even though Dre is already quite optimized for big racing fields. The use live position to let Dre update positions as you go on track. If you have it on, Dre can announce a position change as it happens. With this, With this setting off, the position change will be announced the next time you cross the line. As a new feature, Dre will automatically switch to not using live positions if there are more drivers currently driving than the value in the max car setting in iRacing graphics. If there are more, iRacing won't send all the data of all cars to Dre, which would otherwise result in timing and positions to be wrong. With this feature, you can actually turn down the max car setting a bit to save on your computer, while Dre will still be somehow operational. Use custom relative timing to let Dre calculate gaps and intervals. iRacing unfortunately doesn't provide the gaps we see in the relative tab, but with this enabled we can get as close as possible. With this turned off, some alerts and features will not be available. So unless you experience serious issues with timing, leave this on. The alert more drivers than max cars serves as a notification for whenever live positioning switches on or off. Whenever there are more cars connected to a session than your max car setting is set to, the live position can no longer run optimal. It will therefore switch. Enabling this toggle means that Dre will simply inform you about these changes as it happens. And that's it for the timing details. Until next time, happy racing!